All right. So there you saw the launch of this particular product. And uh, right now in studio, I'm joined by Amina Hamdu, who is the head of distribution uh, for SIB Niger. And uh, also we have Nikkei uh, Wangunyu, who is the executive director of strategy and operations. Gentlemen, lady, welcome to the show. Uh, Islamic financing, uh, Amina, you know, it's, it's interesting. It has very interesting dynamics, but maybe just to lay the foundation, uh, SIB now has introduced Islamic financing. Uh, are you guys led to the party or why? Why now? Um, thank you for the question, Noah. Um, mm -hmm. We're not led to the party. Actually, they say better late than never. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, has been a long uh, conversation that now currently um, we're happy to see it uh, morphing into the Muslim community. Uh, Islamic finance has been there. Actually, in Kenya, it started in 1983. Where we had the first uh, Islamic circle, Takwa circle, that uh, came into play. And with time, we've seen commercial banks um, uh, microfinance institutions and now now an investment bank that is not only giving um, investors an opportunity to invest and trade in the local market mm -hmm. but as well as the global markets yeah so um, so better less than yes. ever yes. or never right? yeah never uh, Nikke, <laughs> yes. uh, I know uh, the dynamics are different when it comes to Islamic banking because now this this is intertwined with faith and there are investors that are very specific. I understand now the investment environment is, it's very specific. Somebody wants to invest in green projects and they want something tailor-made for that. So for, for this, for the demand when it comes to Islamic finance, where do we stand as a country and globally? And what do you think uh, opening this particular arm, uh, what potential does it hold for your portfolio? Okay. So first of all, thank you, Noah, for inviting us to this interview, and of course for KTN. Uh, we don't take it for granted. Thank you so much. Um, so where our journey is in terms of, we looked at it from the global perspective. So in the global side, there's assets of Islamic is about $238 million. And um, we, sorry, billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And from that perspective, we, we said that in Kenya, we want to participate in that. Uh, so you look at countries like Iran, uh, Malaysia, they're doing very well. We also looked at a country like UK, which is positioned themselves from an aspect of not only uh, being a top provider of financial uh, products, but also in the Islamic space. So we looked at it from the aspect of Kenya, how can we position ourselves? Mm -hmm. um, can we also offer uh, products that for, uh, fit for the Islamic faith? Mm -hmm. And not only that, but for the principles of ethical investing. So it's something that is interesting uh, that people are talking about. Mm. Why, how can we be able to invest in assets that have moral principles? Mm -hmm. And that's where we looked at. Okay. And uh, within our portfolio, we now structured uh, different portfolios uh, that can fit that. Okay. So from that aspect, we talked to also uh, Sharia financial advisors and came up with, uh, with a structure that fits that. Ah, yes. that's incredible. So there's so much potential in that regard. Correct. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean the, the dynamics, I like to understand because there is this issue of riba, you know, interest. Sometimes we, I try to figure my mind around Islamic financing and now uh, this nature of investment. What is, what is different in regards to how you guys handle investment vis-a-vis -vis the normal investments that we do? Um, I like the fact that actually you are aware of uh, what Islam prohibits in terms of riba, which is interest. Mm -hmm. um, other aspects are speculation, uh, which we are not supposed to speculate uh, as well, as well as also dealing in uh, investment, trading in investments that are non-Sharia compliant, be it alcohol, gambling, uh, and all that. So. Our uh, investment um, is actually um, in line with the Islamic teachings and Islamic laws that prohibits now the items that I have listed. Mm -hmm. So um, no trading um, in um, investments that are not Sharia compliant are prohibited by Islam, okay. which are the alcohol and gambling, uh, avoiding speculation. So any trade that you're doing, uh, you need to avoid speculation and then actually uh, avoiding riba, uh, which is... Um, one of the uh, prohibitions of Islam. So uh, how do, uh, do the investors make their money then? 
uh, in this regard now if if you invest because a, lo a lot of people get you know the benefit especially interest that's why when when the finance act is signed mm -hmm. and somehow it touches mm -hmm. uh the percentages people are like okay the, this one we 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 have to uh, relook into it so mm -hmm. in, in regards to the value proposition for islamic finance mm -hmm. especially for uh the the money side <coughs> of things mm -hmm. uh, how, how how does an investor benefit um so no uh, you'll also find that most muslim ask the same question because there's uh the aspect of financial literacy around the Islamic finance uh, side, which we're actually coming, and one of the key things we're going to do is educate the market and public on how uh, we avoid riba but still make money for them. Yeah. So what riba entails is, you know, um, you, you giving us money and then us giving you money in return, whereas there's no asset backed to it. So how we make um, our investments is we have global uh, as well as local uh, Islamic uh, asset classes that are traded in a Sharia compliant manner. So most of them are actually asset backed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like a normal trade that you do, but uh, now with a uh, uh, Sharia compliance screening and okay. uh, yes. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Uh, <laughs> Nika, yes. uh, it, it's it's kind of interesting just looking at it um now this this opportunity that it it presents i know even non uh, muslims are looking at at this opportunity and being like yeah i think that could be a better opportunity so give me that comparison why as a normal investor should i turn my eyes and take interest on islamic finance Yes, thank you very much, Noah, for that uh, question. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it's been a global discussion. Um, we look at the case of the current wars that's happening in terms of um, in the, what's happening in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And you find that some of these companies um, that are listed in certain exchanges are providing financing for those areas. Um, so some people would find that morally that's not good. Mm -hmm. and do not want to participate in, s in buying shares for those companies. Mm -hmm. So for such individuals, mm -hmm. that's why we provide these opportunities for them. Okay. Um, and, and many others uh, that in the lines of their faith, um, and it's not only in terms of the Muslim faith, but even Christians. There are some who would feel that they want this particular type of investment. We are open for them. Um, we can be able to provide them with those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And yes, and we, we continue to empower, as Amina said, uh, continue to empower our investors on these other avenues of investing. Okay. Yes. Well, that's, that's quite incredible. You know, uh, I'm looking now, okay, I, I don't want to invest in, in some of this, uh, you know, alcohol and whatnot, you know, are some that are against the religious beliefs. Uh, and now with that opportunity, globally um in kenya now yeah you guys you're saying you're not led to the party um how, how much of an interest since launch you just launched uh, unveiled this last week how much of an interest are we seeing in this regard and even just looking at the clientele moving back in terms of coming to sib and and asking hey but you guys are not uh, doing Sharia financing and Sharia investment, how much of an interest is this generating now? Um, so the interest is there. I, th I think uh, for the longest, the Muslim community has been underserved in terms of uh, diversification of investment portfolios. So we had very limited uh, ways of uh, investing our money. So it's either you do business, you buy property, or you put it in a fixed deposit. So bringing um, this uh, investment opportunities to them because uh, in the market, the Kenyan market, there are so many uh, unit trust funds, even the treasury bonds and treasury bills that are not Sharia compliant mm -hmm. and they're not trying in a Sharia compliant manner. So the interest has been overwhelming and we are glad that uh, we are now in the space where we can provide now inclusion, inclusion in terms of uh, Sharia compliant investment opportunities for our clients. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, in regards to the specific products, uh, I, I'm thinking I can't I can't do T bills and T bonds. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, even though lending to the government has been quite um, uh, lucrative for banks. I don't know how about investment banks, but uh, normal banks it's even borderline crowding out effect that we are seeing 
uh, banks prefer to lend to the government than to, to normal businesses. Uh, but looking now at the specific products, uh, what are some of the products and how, how unique are they? I know you say uh, they have to be asset backed. That's one. Uh, I'm looking even in securities trading. Uh, EBL is one of the, <laughs> the top counters that we see. Uh, how do you navigate that and what are some of the products uh, sort of that you're exploring? Oh, thank, thank you, Noah. Um, so uh, currently we have a very a fantastic fund. Um, predominantly it was called, it's called Mansa X. But now with the SIB Naja, uh, we call it Mansa X Sharia. So this fund is able to, with the, uh, with the help of our experts, be able to come up with a fund that can give a bouquet of not only global assets, but local assets. So a typical investor doesn't need to figure out the price of the bond or the yield or the T-bill uh, rates, um, or in terms of uh, if it's in aspect of SIB, uh, Naja, uh, they don't have to worry about whether it's Sharia compliant. So we will be able to, um, with our team, be able to come up with a portfolio that handles all that in terms of aspect. Mm -hmm. So an investor doesn't have to really think so much. Yeah. Um, all they just wait is invest, mm -hmm. sit back, relax. I like the fact that you said uh, Christmas is coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, so Kenyans should start thinking of where to invest. Yes. So it's as simple as that. We're just opening an account. Uh, we invest, we give you uh, quarterly statements that you see now your progression in terms of uh, how your investments are performing. So it's as in easy as that. Mina, it's, it's, it sounds very enticing. It's <laughs> as easy as that. So y you guys are coming up with products and maybe for comparison purposes, uh, looking at their more, um, uh, you know, more developed markets in regards to Sharia compliant products uh, that are there and what can we learn from such markets that could be implemented here that uh, as it stands, SIB, maybe you haven't yet started, other than uh, such kind of products, Mansa X Sharia. Um, so the good thing with the global um, exposure, we get to also look at uh, other, uh, other markets like the Middle East market, which is way ahead in terms of Islamic finance, and uh, as well as even the African market, like uh, Nigeria, South Africa, they actually issue Sukuk bonds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Islamic finance, as I've mentioned, is underserved, having only 2% uh, of it being done globally. So it's, as, again, we're saying we're not late. So it's a conversation that we are spearheading. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping that uh, by the time, five years from now, we'll have more African countries, more um, ca countries actually included in the Islamic finance uh, space. Okay. Yeah. Um, Talking about targets now, you've mentioned five years from now. Uh, Nikkei, you, you are looking at December because uh, you've just mentioned the, you know, uh, the Shere season. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> but but uh, what are the, the targets that you guys have that we can hold you guys accountable yes. uh, in terms of numbers and deliverables? Uh, okay. Um, so looking at our current fund, Mansa X, which has been operating for five years. Uh, we started off as an AUM of zero shillings. Now we are managing uh, about 22 billion Kenya shillings. Uh, so it's been doing really well. We are happy about it. The beauty of um, SIB uh, Naja in that space, it's an untapped market. Mm -hmm. um, it's a market that, that doesn't have a lot of uh, opportunities for them. And we're looking at the case where even in terms of as far as Somalia, who is now recently in the East African community, mm -hmm. we have that market all the way to that side. Oh. So the potential is very big. Okay. Um, we also don't look at only in Kenya, but right now we're also trying to think of how can we move regionally and of, and of course to the Africa at large. Oh, so the potential is very high. Ah. Yes. I mean, uh, as we finish, yeah, uh, I, I know in terms of investment market um there are all this categorization gas to who has money some people target the young people <laughs> some people target you know the older folks who've been around for longer now they have bigger bags uh in regards to that targeting of the market is it also something that our sib is very intentional maybe to sell this idea to uh the younger folks who might just be making a headspace into thinking about investing and what um, 
I like that question actually because for the longest guys think um, investments is actually for people who earn or actually want to save millions and billions of shillings yeah so for us we actually we want to be inclusive I, I think two, two of the things we are actually uh, priding for like we're talking about is inclusivity as well as diversification mm -hmm. so we are looking at people who have as, as little as 100,000 shillings, they can come and invest and see how their funds will grow over time because uh, investment, um, like investment like this, like investing in Mansa Extraria is not a three months, six months conversation. We want to help uh, our clients build on their wealth, yeah? So now you have, if, even if you're in high school, or sorry, in, in university, or in, uh, you've just started work, yes. and you get that bonus, and you don't know what to do with it, instead of buying, um, something that doesn't bring value. Mm -hmm. You can come and bring the funds to us um, and we'll be able to help you invest uh, for the future. Yeah. Um, as well as any business lady or businessman or anyone who is willing to have disposable income as low as 100,000 shillings, uh, those are uh, the opportunities that we have for them. Okay, yeah. lovely. That's quite welcoming, yeah? But um, be sure to check uh, SIB Naja. Uh, these days with with google you can always find these things you know <laughs> uh dig, dig deep into it uh there might be an opportunity right there mm -hmm. but thank you very much nike wangunyu and uh, amina hamdu uh, who's the head of uh, distribution at sib naja and nike is executive director strategy and operations thank you for your time thank, thank you so guys much. um easy to talk to thank yeah? you so much that's the spirit thank you. Uh, <laughs> we take a short break right